So you want to build a house. Welcome to the podcast by Statera Homes. I'm Scott Daly. I'm here with my co-host, Jackie Kowaleski. Hi, Scott. How are you today, Jackie? I'm great. How are you? Great. And you know, the recording of this podcast is happening in the fall, and it's not that far past Halloween. That's right. Interesting. Halloween was last week, and this week we're talking about... Fears. Fears. I got where you were going with that. How about that? It took me a little bit, but... Not on script, and yet <laughs> Not at she all. follows. You're off to a good start. Here we go. Jackie, it's going to be a wonderful episode. Can't wait. So we're talking about fear, and here's the thing. Um, fear is a big motivator in our lives, isn't yeah. it? Yes. It's primal, right? So we're wired as, as animals, you know, that deep down. That fear is a is a survival instinct. So well, when you fear yeah. something, your survival's on the line. Uh, and there's so even nowadays, we don't necessarily in America have to fear for our physical well being. You know, there's not. I'm here in Rehoboth Beach. We're not worried about a bear right, jumping fright out. Right, fright or flight or yeah. Fight or flight. Fla- fight or flight. Right. Yeah, that's yeah, the decision. That's, yeah, that doesn't typically happen. No, that dis- but that decision's ultimately a very primal thing that, that all humanity is hardwired for. All animals are hardwired for. Right, but fear, the fact of fear influencing our decisions, I think, is something that we should talk about, and that's why we're doing this podcast. Um, I liked the summary statement of uh, fear of losing something is more powerful than uh, knowing, uh, knowing you're going to gain something. Is right. that correct? Right. So I think what, what, you know, we put this in the context of Statera and the So You Want to Build a House podcast. And it's a lot of people are afraid of building a new home because uh, they're worried that they cannot uh, be successfully led to a good outcome. Mm -hmm. And so the fear of that leads them to buy a used house or, or make other arrangements for housing. And so and it's not you know, it's very easy in the world of, of home building because we do this all the time. We think about this all the time in a new construction. We think, what an opportunity. You can design and build the house that you want. And for a lot of people, that is an opportunity. But for a lot of people, when you say, you get the opportunity to design the house you want, people mm-hmm. look at us and go, do I have to? Right. It's terrifying. It to them. terrifies right. them because they don't have the confidence or the knowledge or the right. expertise or whatever they feel like they are lacking that they don't feel like that at the end of that process it's going to be successful, so they would just rather not do it. Right. Well, it's... Okay, so it's... Why not... So I know that I'm not going to get the home of my dreams or maybe not the perfect home, but I do know if I buy an existing home that I have something comfortable that works. Right, that's it. So it's it's just a lesser potential loss. It's... it's. I think it's definitely it's a loss. Safe. It's it. What it does is, is I know... Kind of. But I'm not. It's not on. I'm not on the hook for the disappointment. So I move into my new, my my used right. house. Okay. And I I, but I'm not responsible. Well, hey, I bought this house. It's not the perfect house, but here's why I bought it. But when you build new and people walk through and they go, "Why'd you do this?" and you right. go, yeah. "Oh, you know." Yeah, that's on you. That's on. Or at least you, you. feel it would be on right. you. So I think yeah. most people would honestly rather just not submit themselves to that risk of loss. Right. They're afraid of what that looks like, so they just don't want to do it. It would be a lot of like you and I deciding to play one-on-one basketball. Bring it. And and you would more than likely simply looking at my physique and knowing about my my <laughs> phenomenal <laughs> basketball skills, you would no. just say, yeah, I'm not even going to play. Because you know that there is not going to be a successful outcome That's true. at the end of that game. So why bother? I feel like I'm being challenged and that might not be the best analogy and we might need to take right. a time out real quick. <laughs> wow. Are you going to do you There's have your a shoes in your break car? <laughs> oh, okay. But imagine but if I someone was you're able yeah, to come alongside you and say, yeah. "Hey Jackie, here are some strategies on how you at 5 foot 8 Mm-hmm. can beat someone in one on basketball who's six foot three. Right, which, I would listen up, for yeah, sure. Because you have some inherent uh, problems there. I, and someone who's obviously... Inherent problems? Right, who <laughs> is far beyond you in athletic prowess. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, anyhow, um, so what we were... 
going to really break down. And, you know, we've done other podcasts on new versus used, and this isn't really that. This is really more just understanding that that primal urge that says, look, you can't do this. Yes. And and what we want to help you understand. And the whole point of this podcast is, A, you're going to learn enough about new homes and, and the process so that you're equipped to make good decisions and be you understand that having the right builder uh, come alongside you and guide you towards that process allows it to be a much better outcome than your used house. Because what you're really doing is you're buying somebody else's new home mistake. Mm -hmm. Because whatever used house you go and buy, if you're looking at a new used house, it's it's out there. Well, it, once upon a time, it was new. Sure. And if you're looking at the Delaware beaches, there's not a lot of extremely old housing stock. This is a rapidly growing area and i would say the vast majority of houses that you find there are for sale are less than 20 years old mm -hmm. because more houses are being built in the last 20 years uh in places where people want to live so you're looking at a house that was built new within the last couple of decades and what you are looking at is that somebody built new and they made some choices and they either made really good choices or really poor choices mm -hmm. um but the interesting thing is that a lot of people consider new. So if you're out there and you're listening to this podcast and you're thinking about new, what are those statistics? How many people think new that actually buy? You're going to put that number on me. Come on. Didn't you just look it up? I, I Bring it. It's like... 68%? Six, it's in the Don't 60s. Don't quote me Don't on that. Don't quote us. And it depends on what you're looking at. Yeah. And we're not going to like footnote our podcast. So well, it's not the point of the statistic. Right. But yeah. 60 some people look at new construction who are looking to purchase a property. And then if you look nationwide, the statistics, it's I think it's like 11 percent of residential sales are new construction. Mm -hmm. So if 60 percent look and 11 percent buy. That's a huge drop off. Right? right. And there are a lot of reasons why uh, somebody might. Uh, drop off. It can have to do with cost. It can have to do with location. It can have to do with timing. But a lot of times, I think in this market, when you have the time and you have the flexibility and there's a lot of great new construction locations and you just don't do it because you're scared. And then you walk into a place like Statera and we say, look, we want to actually customize your house around your life. And that scares you even more. Right. More choices. More choices. Mm -hmm. Um, so but that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. That's okay. So let's talk about the old I thing of the big decision. Yes. Because so, yeah, good. A new home is a huge decision, especially financially, right? Oh yeah. For most people, buying a house is the most the biggest financial transaction of their lives. Every, oh yeah. Every time they do it, because typically the prices go up mm -hmm. throughout your life. So it's a huge, and that's I think what drives a lot of the fear of getting it wrong. Yes. Um, so, uh, it, yeah, go ahead. And, well, so I read a little bit of psychology on the big decision. I can use air quotes for that. Um, but typically in someone's life, you only make a couple or a couple, a few big decisions. So if you're, if you're looking at a timeline of someone's life and maybe they're a first time home buyer, the only big decisions you're really typically, and everyone has a different life are making are things like what kind of car am I buying? Am I going to buy mm -hmm. my first or second car? Um, you know, maybe what college am I going to go to? And then maybe a career choice or, or where you're going to live and a job. Right. But you're not shelling out this amount of money for anything else. Right. And this isn't going to a movie and the, the movie was bad. And imagine right. the people yeah. that agonize. Okay, we're going to the movies. What movie are we going to watch? And they're sitting there saying... Oh, my gosh, I can't watch movies. My kids, when they were younger, we would go to, like, a fast food restaurant. I, I probably can't say that on the podcast either, that my children ate fast food. But they did. I still eat fast food. Right? So. Uh, um, yeah, but that's not child abuse. You're an adult. I can do what I want. Right? <laughs> um, any parent my age allowed their kids to be babysat by a McDonald's play place. It was just, <laughs> it was cold, and that was some place they could run. It worked. And, and I would, go. if I'd do it all over again. Um, and they would like, so that's a small decision, right? Hamburger, cheeseburger, chicken nuggets. Right. And they're staring mm -hmm. at the menu for what seems like an eternity. And you're <laughs> like, just buy something. Right. But it's such a big deal to them. Right. But then these are the same people that turn around and go, hey, it's a $600,000 house. Mm hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And usually the the way that it was described in one of the articles I read was, you know, you don't make very many of these decisions. And mm-hmm. at the time you're making the decision, there's you don't see any other house coming in the horizon. So this decision seems so final to you and that you right. have to get it right and that you can't go back and that you are the person that's making this decision. What goes in the house, what material, you know, your your paint colors. Yeah. I mean, people break over this stuff. Right. <laughs> so it's, it's normal to feel that way. It's normal to feel that way. And, and let's talk about what's on the line. So you have an opportunity when you're buying uh, a, a, a piece of property. Like if you go out and you buy a used home, um, you might fall in love with it. You might learn to love it over time. You might have just, there's a lot of different things. So what is at stake? And this is, you know, we look at this as, as, as something of a calling at Statera because we are literally building the setting for the story of your life. And that is a serious thing. And so at least it is for us. I think, mm-hmm. you know, um, so when you're talking about a house, it's the setting for your life story. That's a big deal. And so what we want to do is, is maybe help people move to the place where making the decision for the setting of your life story terrifies you to, that's not a fear, that's an opportunity. It's an mm-hmm. opportunity in the right circumstances. And that is kind of the thing. Like if, if you can get the circumstances right, that is a, maybe a once in a lifetime opportunity. Maybe you're going to build a house once in your life. Mm-hmm. And you have a chance to literally craft a brand new structure around your life the way you want it. And so when you move in, you, you go, this house is me. It fits mm-hmm. me. And it I, it's like being in a glove. And what an awesome opportunity. Right. Um, and, and just to give an example of that, um, because it can sound so broad, um, you kind of led into that saying, oh, where could this go wrong? Well, if you don't design the house for your lifestyle, say you have three kids and you ended up getting a loft because maybe your salesperson didn't really know that much about your life and you just thought lofts are cool, sure. Right. And then the kids are playing in the loft and you can hear everything and then you just don't have that separation that you need for having young kids. That's something that needs to be thought about and could end up you could end up regretting that later on. So right. when we say creating the setting for your story, I know it sounds beautiful and packaged, but it really is a thing that will you'll you'll see day to day. Right. Here's how you're going to live. Right. And here's how we're going to help you. Right. And if live. you're new, to, you know, you sit down with a salesperson, you look at a plan, it might be so intimidating because you don't know that plan backwards and forwards, right. but our sales per- person will say, "Oh, you have that plan? I already know you probably don't want this, this and this. Let's look at that, you know." Right. So if you have someone to guide you, yay. Right. But yes, those are fears. So let's talk about how we can take those fears and process them and get to a good outcome. Sure. Let's unpack that. So what are what do you think is the number one first key factor in that? To have in this process. Have. Yeah. So we can uh, deal okay. with the fear. We want this to end. We're, we're, we're afraid. Yes. But okay. we're going we're gonna to try and, and trust this, that it's going to end success because of yeah. the opportunity of getting a perfect, a better house. Well, the number one thing, just like any business deal, large or small, mostly large, you have to trust the other party. So you need to trust your builder. You need to trust your builder, right? That's huge. That's number one. And I don't think that's that common. Honestly, I think most people come in... Um, you take these surveys, the way builders advertise their pricing is deceptive. The way uh, there's a lot of decisions that you need to make. A lot of those decisions have dollar costs associated with them. And I don't think builders are incredibly transparent in how they talk to people. And I think that makes people nervous because they know, you know, that they're kind of on this ride and they don't know where the ride goes. You know, right? it's, it's just with any sales job, you're kind of looking at a salesperson going, Okay, you probably get commission. Right. How far does that go for you? I mean, what are you really willing to say or explain to me? Are you really going to sit down with me and and find the perfect fit? Or are you going to go to your boss and say, can I throw this in and then we can get going on this? There's a big difference. Trying to earn a bonus or something like that. Uh, And so I think that is 
huge. And yeah. we've said this on other episodes. Like, if you can't trust your builder, don't deal with them. Right. And typically, don't. if you trust your biller, bil- ooh, biller, builder, um, they're going to take the time to sort of be the guide and teach you about the process. The more you know, the more comfortable you're going to be. So I think a good way to try and figure out who you trust is is just to say, okay, what person or what company has been most transparent in my eyes or what has given me a lot of information that's useful to me those are the types of things i would look for right and so part of that is the education so you can listen to our podcast you can learn about the home building process Mm -hmm. no obligation right right no cost it's free it's free go click on it we actually have episode number one which is new versus used homes and we're pithy yeah (laughs) All those pithy comments from Jackie. <laughs> Hours <laughs> of pithy. And I don't write that in. Right. Not that we have a script. I that mean, was not clearly in. Pithy was not in the script. Yeah. Right. So what else? So your relationship with the builder is very important. Right. And then that leads into you understanding how the process works. Just like any experience in your life, if you don't know how it works, what's going on, what are your safeguards, what should you be aware of, right. you're not going to have a good time. Right. And so, and part of understanding that process is, is knowing, uh, it, which goes back to trust in the builder, is just being able to deal with uh, that right builder. Because, uh, you know, imagine this. Most people look at real estate and what do they do? They simply um, walk into a house and they either like it or they don't. Mm-hmm. And that's it. You know, you walk around, you go, yeah, that works or, 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 or that doesn't work. And so imagine that process like you literally whether you know or you don't know exactly what you're looking for basically the logic between that comes into buying a used house is this i'll know it when i see it Mm -hmm. that is not always the greatest way to hit a target right (laughs) because that's not really hitting the target that's bumping into the target and Uh going bullseye and so that almost is as scary to me when you really break down the logic of what you're doing when you're looking at used homes, is, which is that, is I'll know when I see it. I'm, I'm going to make this realtor cart me around to these locations, and I'm going to walk through somebody else's house, and I'm not going to try to not to stare at the pictures of their kids or try to figure out how much better or worse their life is than mine. And I'm going to be in their house, and I'm going to try to envision it as being my house. <laughs> and then I'm going to be like, yeah. Or no. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And some people look like it. One or two of these things, you spend maybe an hour in the house. If you're b- between when you first saw it till you move in, you've maybe been in that whole house an hour. So there's $600,000 you just spent based upon an hour of walking around a house going, mm-hmm. this will work. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Now, look, that's a that's slight oversimplification, yeah. mm-hmm. and we I don't want to sound condescending. But what I do want to say is, the point is, if that process has a higher expectation of your successful outcome than sitting with someone that's going to understand your life, care about your life, and help you, guide you to a brand new house, mm-hmm. that doesn't seem logical to me. It seems to me that the logical thing would actually to be to sit with the person and 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 create your own space because sure. y- you've got a better chance of success in uh, right in doing that. And you you're going to learn the process. They're going to explain it to you. Right. And the last thing you want, and this comes with trusting your builder or just having that transparency with your builder, the last thing that you want is to just learn new information along the way. You know, like that's something that's very emotional for a lot of people. Right. But if you trust your builder and you're aware of everything that's going on and you have conversations and that it is an easier process and it's likely to go more smoothly. Right. And it is emotional. You're talking about your house. Yeah. And that's a thing. And, you know, a good builder is going to understand that what they're doing um, is a day of work for them, but it's not for their customers. Yes. It's bigger than that. And it's it's greater than that so right so again that relationship is one of the biggest factors in feeling like you can overcome the fear is being able to look at that person and going i can walk through this with you and i'm going to trust that you're going to help me get where i want to be huge right another fear of building new is purely the timing of it all right 
And that is, uh, you know, certainly a thing. And, and statistically, if you look nationwide, uh, what what drives a lot of people away from new construction is time, because it's almost always more time consuming mm-hmm. to go ahead and build a house versus look, I look at this one, I'm walking through it, it's for sale. Like as soon as I can m- make all the legal and financial mm-hmm. things happen, it's mine. Right, and you don't have to time up your your living arrangements. Right, so. That is, again, an added complication. And I think it just then it also just it comes down to risk and reward that, mm-hmm. you know, um, the couple of months of awkwardness that you that you might have in trying to schedule out your life while you're building new construction over the years you're going to live in that house, um, you know, is uh, is probably a big deal. So you just it, you want to sit back and think gosh, do I really need to sacrifice years in a place that I love for a couple of months of jockeying around where I'm going to be? Right. So uh, y- y- you have to keep that in mind. You know, we look at people and say, you know, interesting. People really want, when their house starts, they want this exact date. When are you going to be done? And look, right. mm-hmm. big builders might actually be able to do that. They've got their production down. Oh, yeah. But we're small and we're local. We use local guys. You know, and we might have your plumber scheduled to come and do some work on a Tuesday, and he doesn't come to a Wednesday. We just lost a day. It happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, he might want to show up on a Monday when we had him booked for a Tuesday. That happens, too. Uh, but when you work with these local contractors, uh, sometimes the scheduling slips, and our build time slips. And we don't apologize for that. We're going to take the time to get your house right, even if it takes a couple uh, extra days here and there, and we're going to work with local people in our community, even if they don't schedule as rigidly as larger companies, because we think that matters. Mm-hmm. Um, but that is, it's not an exact science, uh, building a house. There's a lot of different parts that need to to show up with people to work on them. There's, uh, it, there's a lot of moving pieces. It is complex manufacturing uh, that is exposed to weather. And so... Um, that is certainly a, a thing, but again, it, it all looks at outcome, you mm-hmm. know, it's like my father went to law school and, uh, he didn't really like law school, but he wanted to be a lawyer and he knew that the life that he would have as a lawyer, he thought was a better life. So he's willing to put up with a little bit of short term frustration and uncertainty perhaps to get a better long-term outcome. Mm -hmm. So I never once heard him say, gosh, I never should have gone to law school. So, uh, you know, I think that's a thing. So that's a really good point that you bring up. What else, Jackie? What other pearls of wisdom have you to share? I think ultimately when you look at this process, we have said, yeah, it's normal to have a moment of pause when you look at the number of, you know, what you're going to pay for this house. Um, but just know that it is possible to feel comfortable going through this transaction if you have the right partner in the transaction. Right. So if you don't feel comfortable, ask your builder questions to relieve yourself of that stress. Right. Figure. That's my main thing. And you right. had a great analogy. Something about, was it zip lining or jump? I don't it know. It was jumping. Yeah. So when I turned 40, um, uh-huh. actually, I think it was my, when my wife turned 40, which, uh, is not that many years ago, but more than I would like to admit, uh, she wanted to go skydiving. Mm-hmm. And so what you don't know about Scott Daly is that I have this incredible fear of heights and that literally, uh, being five feet off the ground makes me nervous. I did not believe you when you said you went skydiving. Right. Because you knew I had a fear of heights. I'm proud of you. So, but what, you know, my wife did one of these things. She's like, you don't have to go, honey. I know you're afraid of heights. Mm. I'm just going to go. Reverse psychology. Right. And my daughter's going to go and, and our sons are going to, so everyone in the family's going except for you. Family pressure. Yeah. Right. So there I am. Pressure. And so, you know, we started looking into this stuff, and she's like, look, we can get a Groupon deal, mm-hmm. something like that. And I, I kind of got to thinking, you know, look, when you're you're jumping out of an airplane, and, and so the first time you jump out of an airplane, at least the first time for me, there was there was a dude strapped to my back, or maybe he's strapped, you know, uh, I'm strapped yeah. to him. Because one of us has to have enough training <laughs> so that we don't die. Uh-huh. And that was not me. Yeah. And I wasn't even willing to get training and jump out of the plane. I wanted I wanted to ride. Mm-hmm. But I, I wanted to have a successful outcome at the end 
of an exhilarating process. Yeah, the negative side of that is definitely is not a good one. Bad. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, I th- I really thought through. So I think the analogy of trust, like you want to talk about trust, like I looked at that guy and I was like, you trust that that parachute. He's like, I packed it. I was like, you must trust it because you're trusting it with your life and my life. So you're invested. Mm -hmm. And I love that. But, you know, then you think about, so it's a little silly, but you turn around and you, and you try to make that about home building and you realize, you know, these people, they, they want the, the least expensive home they can possibly find that's brand new. And I'm thinking, you know, I don't know that I wanted the cheapest (laughs) skydiving outfit. Cheapest parachute. Right. Because if you get that wrong once, the implications are real. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Grave even. This podcast would not exist. Would not <laughs> exist. And so what I did is I picked someone that I could trust mm-hmm. to guide me through a process that I was afraid to go through, yeah. but because I picked good people to surround myself with, I made it. Yeah. Now ask me if I'll ever jump out of an airplane again. And the answer is depends on the size of my fragile male ego on the yeah. day that you ask. <laughs> But you have bragging rights. But right I've now. done it. Yeah. I have checked that box. That's I right. Ha- I walked away you did a it. little taller that day. Good. And my family was shocked. I'm still terrified of heights <laughs> because I believe that to be a rational fear, not an irrational fear. That's fair. So, but the point is, get a trusted guide when you're going through a process that makes you scared. Absolutely. And, and the outcome you have, if you have the right guide, uh, is going to probably be the outcome that you want. That's right. Do we have anything else? We have nothing else. We have nothing Unless else. Unless you have another crazy stunt that no, you just want to brag about on the not podcast. T- not today. Lots okay. of crazy stunts in the vault, but but that's enough for today. Okay. So, so this is the So You Want to Build a House podcast. I'm Scott Daly. And I'm Jackie Kowaleski. Have a great day. So You Want to Build a House is brought to you by Statera Homes. Statera Homes is a craft home builder in Southern Delaware. This builder finds value in working with you to build a home that is the perfect fit for your lifestyle. Statera truly sets themselves apart from other builders in the area. To find out more, visit their website, www.staterahomes.com. That's S-T-A-T-E-R-A-H-O-M-E-S.com. Or call their model home at area code 302-329-8881. That's 302-329-8881. Music from this podcast was by the band Defining Parallel from their recent single, Painted Lives. Thank you for listening to So You Want to Build a House. To stay updated on the most recent episodes, subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or Spotify or wherever you found it to begin with, or... Check out Statera Homes website, which is again www.staterahomes.com. Thank you very much.